Hey guys, it's Kevin here, and today I'm doing a video on torque wrench calibration. How you can do this at home uh, with some inexpensive tools. Let's bring you down here and let's get started. Alright, first thing, as you see, we have uh, two torque wrenches down here that we're going to calibrate and test and make sure they're working right. And uh, as you can see here, this is what I use to calibrate my torque wrenches. This was bought at Harbor Freight. It's a relatively uh, cheap device. Well, inexpensive. Let's not say cheap. I think I paid like $70 for it. You can get them pretty inexpensive. Um, I've had this tested, and it showed within an accuracy of a tenth of a foot-pound of torque. So it's more than uh, accurate enough to uh, calibrate my torque wrenches. Now, what you want to do is you're going to want to get something to mount it into a vise. What I did is just take a piece of square box tubing. As you can see, I welded a socket into it half inch drive socket so that way I can mount it into this my small vise which we'll do now and you just plug the adapter and you're ready to calibrate now get you down here so you can see this Now you want to to test a torque wrench. You want to pick a range about halfway down the torque wrench's scale. And the reason it is is torque wrenches are most accurate in about the middle range of their ability scale. Um, if you're finding you're using a torque wrench at the very low end or the very high end, you need to go up a size. If you're if you're constantly using your torque wrench at the top of the scale you need to get a bigger torque wrench if you're constantly using it at the bottom you need a smaller torque wrench you want to try to shoot for a tor uh, torque reading when you're going to do your setting that's going to fall in the middle of the scale of the torque wrench you're using so the middle scale on this particular one and this one's way out of calibration I'll show you guys is about uh, about 70, 75 foot pounds so let's set it 75 and we'll see where it's actually working. Zoom you in on the device. Turn it on. It'll self-calibrate. All right. All right. We got set 75. Let's see where it breaks away at. It's pretty close. I need to do it this morning. About 64 foot pounds. So it's about 10 foot pounds off. So, let's bring you back over here where you can see. And I'll show you how to tear this style of torque wrench down to do the adjustment. Alright, as you can see, this torque wrench has a knurled <coughs> lock rod knob. Everybody knows this. You know, you lock it so it doesn't change torque while you're doing the adjustment. But this is your calibration lock. And all you do is simply unscrew this piece here. And you will notice that this inner sleeve, well, once you unload it, moves. That is your adjustment. Now since this torque wrench was reading low, what I usually advise doing is turning this about half a turn, lock your setting, and you want to be real careful when you're reattaching this because you can turn that calibration piece just be real gentle. Make sure it doesn't move around. Thread it down. It's 
snug it up, hand tight. Now, reset your torque wrench back to where you were at. In this case, we're at 75, so oh, a little too far. 75. Lock this down. Let's see where we're at now. Bring it back down here so you can see. zeroed out. Now, let's see what we have. There's 60, 67. Getting closer. Same thing. Now, I like to loosen this with the Torque still applied so that way the calibration piece doesn't turn. As you can see, once it's locked down, once it's got spring pressure behind it, you can't turn this. That's why you have to unload it, which, as everybody knows, you should be doing this every time you're done using your torque wrench. If not, the uh, spring will get stressed and your values will change. Turn it about a quarter turn. See that turn right there. Turn it as assembly until it gets some spring pressure behind it so the calibration rod doesn't move. There we go. Alright, let's set it back up for 75 foot pounds. Zoom me back in on the uh, reader. This unit powers itself off pretty quick. It's good so it doesn't waste battery. Alright. Let's see what we have now. Seventy. Okay, we're up at seventy pounds. Let's adjust it again. Now, the trick is you want to turn it in to increase your torque setting. Turn it out to decrease it. We're having to increase it, so we've turned it in. Turn this, put a little spring pressure behind it, so that way the calibration sleeve doesn't turn. There we go. Set it again. Alright, and let's check it again. Zoom me in here. Yep, tripod's getting a little loose. Alright. Alright, now let's see what we have. 60, 67, 69, 70. 74! Almost. Alright, this should be the last time I need to do this. Probably about a quarter turn should do the trick. Unload it. Let's do a little over a quarter turn. Put a little tension on it. Now when you get it all the way just where you want, you want to snug this nut down much tighter so it doesn't come loose on its own and change your adjustments. So the last thing you want is 
you'd be in the middle of a job and go to adjust your torque and not realize you're also adjusting your calibration. All right, 75. Let's bring you back into the reader. You want to pull nice and steady. Don't jerk on it. 75. Now what I like to do is undo this. Power this off. Power it back on. So it recalibrates back to zero properly. Test it one more time. Always make sure you can duplicate. 74. Oh, that's a hair above 75. Try it one more time. Nice and steady pull. Actually, it's a little too tight. Let's bring that back out one more time. Just about an eighth of a turn loose should do the trick. Loosen this up. Loosen that up just a hair. Put some tension on it. Let's check it one last time. Did a test. 65, 69, 70, 73, 74. Well, I think we got it. Seventy-five point two. It's more than good enough for me. Now, when you're done with your calibration on this dial. Make sure you take something and tighten this down pretty tight. You want it as tight as you can get it without doing damage to it. Because that way, when you're running this up and down, you're not changing your torque specs. But this torque wrench is now in calibration. You want to, of course, unload it. And what I like to do is, when I storm, I just roll up just enough where I can feel it start to make tension against the spring. And lock it down there. That way it's less likely this will loosen up on its own while it's in the case. And that's this style torque wrench. And that's how you calibrate it. Now, we'll go with this style. This is kind of the style you see in most parts stores. Um, this is a performance tool. It's kind of a low-end torque wrench. Um, I keep a couple of kind of what I call cheap torque wrenches uh, <clears throat> for bad weather situations or where I'm going to kind of be harsh on one or one's more likely to be dropped or if I'm going out and doing a house call job so that way if it gets damaged or lost I don't, I'm not upset because I didn't lose my good ones um, none of my snap-ons are damaged but these can also be calibrated they're not that hard to do but first we need to figure out if it's off so this one scales up to 250 so let's do Let's do 125. All right, let's run it all the way up. There's 125. Let's see what we have. Right 
down. Oh, I'm moving the vise around. Let's recenter the vise. unit. Let's try that again. One twenty two. Looks like it's set a little low. Make sure I get my reading right because this one's usually pretty close. This one's got a weird scale on it, and it's got a dead on at 118, so we'll recheck it again at 118. Probably get us a better reading of how this one's performing. So. Oh, it's about two pounds low. All right, now this one is a little bit different. This torque wrench has, I don't know if you can see that real well, has a roll pin in it. But you do not need to drive this out. This one's actually not too hard to calibrate, but if you notice this, don't drive this out. That's only if you want to take it apart and repair it. If you look at the bottom, you'll see a little notch. Take your little pocket screwdriver. You know everybody has one if you're working on cars. And you will see an Allen head threaded rod with a nut attached to it. You loosen this and turn the Allen head to adjust it tight and loose. Let me grab a socket and... Allen wrench that we need and uh, we'll be right back and we'll adjust this one. Alright, back. This one takes a 6 millimeter Allen and since we need to go up in the scale a little bit we're going to put it in the end and just gently give it a little bit of a turn. Let's run back up to where we were at. One eighteen, lock it in place. Power on the reader, or a torque adapter is actually what it's called. Zoom me in here so you can see it. All right. Let's see. We're looking for one eighteen. One seventeen, almost. Now this one here, you don't have to release tension on if you want to adjust it. Just place your Allen back in it, tighten a little bit, and then retest. Alright, looking for 118. like we got it. Let's check it again. One, ten, eighteen. This torque wrench is now in calibration. All right, guys. So uh, that's how you uh, calibrate the two most common torque wrenches a do-it-yourselfer should see out on the market 
remember to always unload your torque wrench when you're done using it. I like to zero it out at the lowest setting. And of course, snap my calibration cap back on. And it'll go back in the box. Alright. So you guys go. That's uh, how to calibrate your torque wrenches yourself at home. And save you. Uh, I used to spend about $125 to $135 each wrench. Every six months I had mine calibrated at a uh, calibration facility on the military base right by where I live. Uh, they're open to, we're open to the public at one time, and I used to carry my wrenches in there to the same place that used to calibrate my wrenches when I was a military technician, and um, and I was you know, spending that much money, and I found out for eighty dollars I could buy this little guy, which is basically what they're using at the calibration facility, and do it myself, and not have to deal with using weights. I, I've seen people do that with calibrated weights, and they hang weights from the handle and. Uh, it's just a mess. I wouldn't want to mess with that. You can spend 80 bucks, probably even less now. You can probably get this for a lot less. And uh, make you a little adapter to fit in your vise. And uh, do it all yourself. I mean, it's not that hard to do. You just plug it on in, take a reading, and make your adjustments. Just make sure that when you... Uh, just make sure when you calibrate these things, you calibrate them in the center of the scale. That's why I said the torque wrench is most accurate towards the middle of its scale not on the uh, high end or low end and in reality that's where you want to use it you don't want to you know if you got a 250 foot pound torque wrench you don't if you're constantly using it at 230 220 you need a bigger torque wrench if you're constantly using it down at the bottom of the scale you need a smaller torque wrench um, if I uh, I have reverse adapter somewhere and I need to dig them out because I need to calibrate my small quarter inch my, my three East drive torque wrenches and uh, if you ever need to check the accuracy of this, if you're curious, you can use a beam style torque wrench. Load a beam style torque wrench in it and uh, pull to you get a reading on the beam. Look at the scale. See what the reading on the scale is. Like I said, I took this down to the same place that does my torque wrenches. I had them check this. They told me it was within a tenth of a foot pound of torque, which is absolutely amazing for something out of Harbor Freight. And um, basically, when I walked down there, they have a really large version of this bolt it to a desk, just like you see with the vise, and they load your torque wrench in, pull, take a couple readings, make some adjustments, take some more readings, make some more adjustments, and when they're done, they charge you an arm and a leg and hand it back to you. So, uh, buy one yourself, you can calibrate it every time you want. Drop your torque wrench, recalibrate it yourself. I mean, uh, save some money. That's the whole point. And you don't want a torque wrench that's way out of calibration. Last night when I was uh, messing around, I was taking some pictures for the Eric the Car Guy forum of this setup, and that's when I had discovered that this calibration retaining nut had come loose on this one. And this torque wrench is reading 25 foot-pounds off on the low side. If I'd been doing like a head gasket job or something at a critical torque, I'd have been torquing those bolts 25 foot-pounds lower than I should have been. And it was clicking nice and neat. And I mean, it sounded, everything sounded beautiful. But I noticed right off the bat, I said, ah, that doesn't feel right. I've been doing this quite a long time. I've been doing this 20-some years. And I usually know what a torque should feel like and I knew this wrench was wrong and I loaded it into the machine sure enough it was way off so uh, as you can see we, we set it back to stock now uh, it's back to standard now it's good I mean I'd use it on anything I own these are the torque wrenches I use here in the shop and I use them a lot I'm, I'm a big fan of precision equipment you know that old my arms calibrated and I just jerk on it till I can't jerk anymore and it doesn't work these days not with multi-metal vehicles and and you know, critical components that have to be dead on or where they're supposed to be or those problems. You can't just rely on, they used to call the German torque man, guten tight. Can't do that anymore. you got to have some of these. And I advise, buy a lot of them. I mean, you can get them for a good price these days. They're not that expensive. And with, you know, one of these, calibrate them yourself. I mean, as long as they're reading right, it doesn't matter if they're cheap or expensive. They're doing the job. I mean, I've seen people spend almost a thousand dollars on digital torque wrenches that they can brag on all day long and then if you drop it and break it or you leave it at somebody's house or somebody looks at it and sees it and snags it off your workbench or you know borrows it as a breaker bar I've had that happen 
I've had that happen in different shops where you come in and somebody reached over your toolbox and grabbed your torque wrench and they're using it like a breaker bar. Yeah, no, no thank you. I'd rather buy the the lesser expensive ones, calibrate them if somebody busts one up. Uh, I'm I'm not going to be happy, but I'm, I'm not going to be mad as I would if somebody busted up a $1,000 torque wrench. So, uh, until next time, guys, save yourself some money, do your own work, or do your, the work yourself, and we'll see you.